Hebrews chapter 11. This is the great chapter of faith. And uh, as Paul has been preaching and teaching. Now, remember, we have been going through the letters of Paul in chronological order. We began way back with the uh, Thessalonian letters and we worked our way up and through all of his letters, this being the last one. And we see that Paul, for the most part, deals with one particular problem over and over, and that is people giving up their faith. Uh, whether it is their giving up of their faith, their belief in Jesus Christ, or giving up their attendance at church, it is a common problem even in the early days even under the teaching and preaching of Paul when you've got someone like Paul in the pulpit you figure you'd be there every Sunday uh, when you had somebody like John in the pulpit you figure people were coming all the time when men like Peter were standing there preaching you just figure the churches were always filled but their churches had the same problems that we have today and that was keeping the people coming for whatever reason, people will have a tendency to lose their faith or give up or get tired. And so Paul is preaching and he's talking to us about some very set things. One of these that he comes today with us is faith. We talked a little bit about it before in the fact that faith is eternal. It doesn't quit. Our life is a life of faith. Therefore, as a life of faith, it is a continual life. Once we come to Jesus Christ, we stay with him. If you don't, Peter, or rather Paul, will say, they left us because they were not of us. Uh, Jesus gave us the story about the uh, sower who went out to sow, and he sowed all those different types of, uh, in, in rather, in those different types of soil. And uh, sometimes people are in thorny grounds, and uh, the thorns jump up and choke them. And the first thing it chokes out is someone's faith. And so now faith is the substance of, of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen for by it the elders obtained a good report by faith we understand that the ages were formed by a word from God so that the things being seen have not come into being out of the things which appear by faith Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying about this gift. And by it he, being dead, as the world would see it, yet speaks. By faith, Enoch was translated so that he should not see death. And yet he was not found, because God had translated or taken him. For before his translation, <clears throat> he had this testimony, that he pleased God. And so we want to take a look at, with, uh, with you today about this thing about faith. Faith is. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. This is faith. So let us consider these words, because they're pretty lofty words, I'll grant you that. But still, let's take a look at this. Faith is the confident passion, or rather confident persuasion of unseen things. Notice what he said. The word translated substance there occurs three times when Paul is writing. Uh, here, in then in Hebrews uh, 3.14, uh, 2 Corinthians, uh, twice in 2 Corinthians. And he translates this word substance, same word substance, he translates it confidence in those other three times that he uses it. So this is the confidence we're saying. The word that's translated evidence here by Paul is a form of a verb which signifies to convince. What's the whole purpose? They, in a court of law, they bring evidence. And what's the purpose of the evidence? The evidence is supposed to convince you that this man is innocent or this man is guilty. I'm going to prove to you today that this man stabbed this woman and left her on the ground. And so then the, they, they bring out what evidence they have. What evidence, because they want you to be convinced and certain that what they're saying is true. And so they want you to agree with them. 
So that's the idea that Paul has here. Faith is the confidence of things hoped for, the conviction. See, he wants you to be convinced, convicted, a definite belief that you have in things not seen. Now, <clears throat> let's begin by saying faith is not belief on the evidence of the senses. Faith isn't what I can see with my eyes, hear with my ears. If God came down and talked to me, physically stood right there and talked, how much faith do I need to believe that God is talking to me? Like this much maybe? Because he's there. If Michael comes, stands right here and tells me something, I have no need of faith that he is going to come and tell me something. He's done it. Once I get to heaven, guess what disappears in my life? Faith. Faith is something we need here. You don't need faith in heaven. I won't have to believe that Jesus is coming for me once he comes. I won't have to believe that when I die I'm going to heaven once I get there. So faith is not a belief on the evidence of senses. What do I need faith for? Faith is not credulity. Credulity means that some people are apt to believe. There are those that believe everything that everybody says. Salesmen come by. While everybody else is buying, it must be true. My mother would say, if everybody jumped off a cliff, would you do it? If I was a credulous person, if I was somebody who believed that what everybody says, see, we believe because everybody else does. That's credulity. Well, no. I don't care if everybody denies Jesus Christ, I still believe in him. I believe in him because I believe in him. I don't believe in him because somebody told me to. See, I didn't come from a family of faith where those, there were those who believed before me. I was the first. And so I had to believe because I believe. So faith is not credulity. Faith is not I believe because everybody else does. My faith isn't because it's fashionable. If faith goes out of style, I won't abandon it. It has gone out of style and I still find it stylish. And faith is not a mere assent to understanding. Faith isn't like, oh, okay, got it. It isn't the ability to understand it, it's the ability to believe it. I could understand how God could speak and the worlds could be created. Because if he's all powerful, then that should be something he could do. So I might understand that. But yet do I believe it? When my faith is challenged and people say, oh, you don't still believe in creation, do you? Yeah, I do. And people say, but nobody believes in creation. I don't care that nobody believes in it. I still believe in it. And the evidence for creation is stronger than the evidence against it. See, faith is not mere assent to understanding. Faith is the ability to believe so that you are convicted that it is true. Conviction are those things that we die for. Our faith in Jesus Christ, something that we die for. That's real faith. To know that Jesus Christ is coming for me regardless of what the world says. To know that my God is the creator regardless of what the world says. See, you know how many times God has rewritten his word to adjust what he has said wrong? Never. Forever thy word is settled in heaven, O God. It won't happen until you know God I mean? lets it happen. Just not going to happen. Let's continue though. Faith is a confidence. It's a persuasion of unseen things. I don't worry about what I see because I have confidence in the unseen. I have confidence in God's control and God's authority and God's love. Faith is also the source of all spiritual achievement. By it the elders received a good report. By it See, they achieved something. Faith allows you to achieve something. Consider the New Testament. 
It describes this Christian life and faith in these ways. Whosoever believeth shall not perish but have everlasting life. Sanctified by faith, we are told. Faith is the victory that overcomes the world. Wherein believing they rejoiced. Kept by the power. See, this is how the New Testament Christian explains his life. We explain our life to people not by the things that we see, not by the things that we have accumulated. My comfort doesn't come in what I own, but rather by who owns me. I have been bought with a price. I am not my own. I belong to him. Those are the things that give me my confidence. By it the elders, by faith, by trusting in what? The word of God. When God says something, I believe it. When God says to do it, I do it. When God says don't do it, I try not to. <laughs> That's the best I can hope for. Well, I know I shouldn't, and, and for the most part, I, I'm pretty good at not doing it. But every now and then, God writes one of them tricky ones and it just sort of gets you. See, this is the due to the fact that all Christian life is a result of some heavenly influence. I don't live for this world. I live for the world to come. That's where my faith is. And that's where my faith really comes from. Faith lifts us up to heaven. It raises the soul into the heavenly world. It brings the future things near to me. It makes Christ live before us. I am in his presence every day and he is before me every day by faith. I read his word and I could follow his steps. The effect of this is that our spiritual nature is in development. As I trust and as I believe I grow in my faith. You take a tropical plant, you take it to the cold, guess what happens? It dies. I live in a heavenly world, or at least I'm supposed to be, and if I wander too far away from heaven, guess what happens to me too? I die. The absence of faith is the absence of my nearness to heaven. I quit thinking how important that life is and I begin to dwell on how important this life is. I look for the joys that I get here. I look for the things of this world to stimulate me and to excite me instead of the thought of walking there someday. And finally, let us say this then. Faith is the means of securing divine commendation. By faith, they obtained a good report. It shows our, res our personal responsibility with regard to faith. My faith isn't the faith of my parents. My children's faith isn't my faith. They have to have their own. I can teach them. I can share with them. I can tell them why I believe what I believe. But at some point in time, they have to believe their own. J.D. has to have his own faith. He can't believe. Oh, well, my grandpa said so. Somebody say, hey, your grandpa was a nut. <laughs> that may be true. But my grandpa, no. I believe what my grandpa said because God's word says it. So long as grandpa's quoting from the Bible, J.D. knows that grandpa's going to be truthful. Because J.D., like us, knows that the word of God is the truth. So J.D. says, well, I believe it because the Bible says so. I heard my grandpa preach it once. And I know he was reading out of that old book. That's why I believe it. My faith isn't transferable. I can't give it to you. I can only tell you why it worked for me. And then hope you'll want it too. When that preacher shared with me my need for Jesus Christ, he was convinced that I needed Jesus. I wasn't quite so convinced. Because I was still pretty certain I was a heck of a nice guy. But when he got finished 
and I read the Word of God, and I listened as he shared with me the Word of God, the Word of God convinced me that I needed to be saved. Not by works of righteousness, which I have done, but according to his mercy, he saved me. He wasn't me anymore. And it wasn't just because the preacher said it. Because the Holy Spirit had to take those words and make them alive in me. So I believed what the Holy Spirit shared with me. And through it I have also obtained a good report. My sins were washed away. By my faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. I believe he died for me. I believe he washed my sins away. And because I have asked him to forgive me. He has forgiven me. All of that is an act of faith. Did I see Jesus literally remove my sins? No. Have I, was I an eyewitness to the literal death of Jesus Christ? No. But I believe it as much as that thief on the cross who said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And I said very similar words the day I got saved. Lord, I am a sinner. Forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart and save me. And just as real as that thief was with Jesus that day, I know I will be with him someday as well. I have confidence that all those who have gone before me with their faith in Jesus are already there. I believe my daddy's there. I believe my mom is there. I came to faith before they did, but they got to heaven before I did. And they got there by the same way I did, the blood of Jesus Christ. And so it has returned for them a good report. We may not have been the best of people. How often have I said to you, we were that house that your parents told you to stay away from. That's the people we were. And yet, everybody knew that's not the house you go to. Yet we became... Some of the first Christians, in fact, I probably became the first Christian in that entire neighborhood. And within three weeks, 103 of those kids in that neighborhood were going to a, son, uh, a Bible study every Thursday night that we held. By faith, we obtained a good report. God, we are told, testified about Abel. He had said that though he was dead, yet he spoke. See, because you and I know and understand by faith that we don't die. Abel left this world when his brother Cain killed him and suddenly finds himself standing before God. And say, God looks at him and said, how'd you get here? Oh, my brother murdered me. What? He still speaks though he's dead. You speak to God. Though my mother, as far as this world might be concerned, she appears to be dead. They had a funeral and everything for her. But I know my mom is alive. And I know my mom's in heaven. And I know my mom is talking with the angels. I just hope they ain't telling her everything <laughs> that I ever did. But they're probably saying, hey, you must be pretty proud of that son of yours who came to faith in Jesus and was faithful to tell you. Oh yeah, I'm very glad. Very, very glad. By faith, we obtain a good report. So then in conclusion, we find these words. The beginning point of our faith is believing in God's character. That's where it all begins. I believe in God. I believe in his character. I believe he is who he says he is. If God says I am the creator, then he's the creator. If Jesus Christ says, I am the Savior of the world, I believe he is the Savior of the world. Why? Because I believe his character. I believe he's spotless. I believe he's without sin. I believe he wouldn't tell a, a lie. I believe all those things that he says. I believe in his character. Therefore, what he says, I believe. I can conquer death in the grave. Now, I'm cheating on that one because I have historical evidence that he cheated. I wasn't there the first day when he said it. I know he conquered it because it's an empty tomb in Jerusalem. I know he conquered it because they have never discovered his body. If he had lied to me, they, let me tell you, in 2,000 years they would have found him. But no man has ever found his body. Why? Because they saw his body alive and real. Touch me. Here, put your finger in 
the hole. Here, run your hand in my side. Evidence, physical, visual that those men have. You and I still take it by faith. But I believe what he says. I believe he could conquer. Since he can conquer death and the grave, can he conquer my sin? Yeah, I believe that too. I believe not only he is who he says he is, but the end point, as I said, the beginning is believing in his character. And the end point is believing then what God promises. Can I believe God to keep his word? He will do what he says he will do. When we believe that God will fulfill his promises, even though we don't see those promises materialize yet, we demonstrate faith. I have not yet walked on heaven's ground, but Jesus promised me that's where I was going to go. I'm still believing. I still have faith. I'm still trusting. I'm still living as though I'm going that way. By faith. By faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. 